Hi everyone, this is Rich. I thought I would do something a bit different for this video. This is something that I got up to about two years ago, and I think it illustrates a concept that I really believe in. I believe that as humans we learn by doing. If you really want to learn about something, I think you need to have a reason to learn. I think you also need to get hands on and use what you've learned, otherwise it's never going to stay in your head. So my message is, if there's something that interests you, have a go and see what you learn. After all, what's the worst that can happen? Back around Christmas 2017, I discovered Arduinos. For those of you who don't know, an Arduino is a microcontroller. A bit like the kind of electronic brain you'd find inside a coffee machine. The idea is you can write a bit of software in a neat little development environment, and then you can upload it onto the Arduino where it will run without having to be plugged into the computer. The thing that intrigued me was the range of sensors that can be attached to one. And in particular, I was fascinated by a breakout board that had a little gyroscope, accelerometer and magnetometer on it. They're the sort of thing that everybody takes for granted they'll find in a smartphone these days. But here was one I could have a play with. Here's the thing. I've never been particularly big on electronics or computer programming. But it's different when you put the hardware in front of yourself and you actually have a go at trying to make it work. I dug through all the documentation and some of the example code was really useful. Soon I had something pretty cool, which was my computer reading off the rotations of the gyroscope I was holding up in front of me. It occurred to me that if I did some basic maths, I could add up all of these rotations and have the Arduino keep track of its orientation. I had to wrap my head around a whole bunch of vector maths, but at the end of it I really did have a system that could not only tell me what the pitch and roll angles of the board were, but it could also use the magnetometer to work out which direction it was pointing. Now at this point I'm sure somebody might be thinking, Rich, why didn't you just download Argypilot from the internet? Well, two reasons. First, I think that figuring this sort of stuff out is fun. But also, now I know how it works. Yes, I know my code is probably really inefficient. I haven't even wrapped my head around Quaternions yet, for example. But I can't overstate how much I learned about digital interfaces and C programming from this little exercise. Once I had this inertial reference system working, it seemed obvious to me that I should try some kind of primitive autopilot. Arduinos work very well with the kind of servos that come with radio-controlled aircraft. So I got an old model glider that I had, took out the radio gear and installed the Arduino and the breakout board. In theory, the Arduino would turn the glider onto a particular heading, in this case the heading it was pointing when it started up, and point the nose relative to the horizon so that it should glide at a decent angle. I had no way of testing it beforehand, so all I could do really was take it up a local hill with some friends, throw it, and see what happened. So, I needed to find a higher hill. The problem I had was that the glider needed to be flying at a decent speed. Eventually, however, I just about managed to get it away, and I was rewarded to see the glider settle onto a straight flight along a heading. Slightly wrong heading, and my friend had to go running after it. <laughs> oh yes, can we zoom in? Oh, we can. That's not going to make the end of the field, is it? This one, however, was the best shot. I let my friend launch it. He managed to give it a good throw, and I saw it pass straight as an arrow before my eyes. It was one of those amazing moments where, just for a second, everything was working perfectly. And then it found the only bush in the entire field. Oops. For the last flight I got a bit cocky and I paid the price. In a moment of inspiration I set the heading back towards the hill, hoping to see a nice steady curved flight. But I hadn't thought about the landing. Oh. <laughs> we didn't see it, but it must have landed one wing first, spinning the glider around and damaging the tail. I had no way to repair it, so that was the last flight of the day. So what's my message? Well, flying the glider was fun, but it was fun because it was the culmination of many hours play. It was my creation. I put my clumsy code into a badly soldered Arduino board inside a battered old model glider, and it worked. I wouldn't have enjoyed launching a pristine new model out of a box half as much, and I certainly wouldn't have learned as much as I did. 
Above all though, I think my message is, if there's something you would like to try, what are you waiting for? Why don't you have a go and see what you learn?